right, welcome. I think we're going to have some fun with this one. <clears throat> I anticipate this is going to be a two-video um, presentation, just to, to give you a little bit of a break. We're going to create a fifth-degree polynomial grapher, and I've created I created this equation. You don't need this equation for this program to work, but it's kind of nice to see. But I, I created this in in Word in Equation Editor, and we can we can talk about that. But I um, I do find the uh, the equation option here within Excel quite a bit clumsier. Um, we get a little bit more flexibility with this. So anyway, this is already here. Um, well, as far as working with this video, perhaps if you had the option, the best way to do this may, might be to be work work on a laptop <clears throat> while you have a, a main computer watching this video, or perhaps you know if you could have an iPad with the video on and work on a computer. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to go back and forth, but you're probably going to be pausing this along the way. Anyway, I'm going to try to work at a reasonable pace, but my anticipation is most of you will be, will be pausing along the way. So the first thing I want to do after I have this equation in, and again, the equation not necessary, you can worry about putting this in at a later time, is I'm going to go to cell B2, and I'm going to start giving the, the user an option, an opportunity to put in values for A, B, C, D, E, and F. So in, in uh, B2, I'm just going to put A equals, and you're going to notice I've centered this, which would mean I, on the home page, Yours might look like this, no big deal. I've centered this entire column as I have this whole work worksheet. So um, that that's why, you know, we can talk about the formatting issues. Then B space equals, C space equals, D space equals. Um, take that out just because I sometimes am a perfectionist. Let's see, A, B, C, D, E space equals and F space equals. This is just to give the user an option of putting values in column C for our coefficients. So you might be tempted to, you now if you're on the home ribbon, to go ahead and put a border around this. And a lot of times I like to just kind of color code where the user is going to input information, which would be here. So you can pick a color for that. Um, I try to stay pretty, uh, pretty pastel so the, the lettering shows up real well. And I'm just going to put in for right now values for A. I'm going to put in maybe uh, just one for A. Um, I'll put in zero for B. Uh, C, maybe negative three. D, I'll put in a one. E, I'll put in five. And F, will put in negative two or something like that. Uh, just, just so as we create the graph later, we're going to see that we have the function, in this case, AX to the fifth minus three x to the third plus dx squared plus 5x minus 2. Okay, then I'm going to need a place for them to, for the user to put in a minimum maximum value for x. So I think I'll skip down a line. I'll go down to b9 and I'm going to go ahead and just put in, uh, type in x min here, maybe a colon or something, or you can put equal, whatever you like. It doesn't really affect uh, the outcome just so long as the user knows that we're putting in an x max, x min, x max. Maybe skip a space or, or not. You know what? I think I'll put in y min, y max right here. Kind of makes sense to put those together. Y min, y max, b12. And then this will be a little bit weird and, and maybe we can come back to it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it, put it in right now. I'm going to put in a value x equals y equals m equals. Uh, that's gonna that we're gonna work with this a little bit later to come up with a equation of a tangent line at some given point x. So again, we might want to go ahead and border this, as you see, and maybe give the user our color code, and maybe border this. And whoops, didn't want to give that the color code. Control Z, border this. Give, I'm just going to give this X one this color code for right now. Um, you'll see why a little bit later. The user's only going to put a value right here. And that's going to give me everything I need to get my graph. And down here, if I have an X and a Y point and a slope, I can get an equation of a line that we're going to add to this graph. Uh, probably not until the, the second video. So next thing I'm going to do is, after I go down too far, is I'm going to come down here um, to let's say let's say a19 and I'm just going to type in incr period you don't have to have this but that just stands for increment 
And what I'm going to need to do is, is determine the increment I'm going to count along my t-chart. I'm going to create a t-chart of x values and y values down below here. Maybe I'll center those out as well. And my increment is going to go right here. Now, this is going to seem like overkill, but we're going to create 10,000 steps of increment. So we're actually going to have a 10,001 element t-chart, which which or a 10,000 element t-chart, which seems like might may seem like overkill, as I said. But as we move on in this year, in this course, you're going to realize why we have that. But for right now, it's just kind of a bear with me. So I'm going to go ahead and for my X min for right now, I'm going to put in negative five and I'm going to put my X max of five. I'm not doing anything with my Y min, Y max. That'll be for a later time. So I know that my very first element then in my T chart should be negative five. So I'm going to go down to A21. I'm not going to type in negative five. I'm going to type in a formula. And when we type in a formula, we start with an equal sign. So equals. And now I could either type in cell C9. So just C9. Here's an option. I'm typing it in and hit enter. But here's what I like to do. I'll delete that. Instead, I like to type in equals and then click on the cell that I want. And so you can see this makes this dynamic. The user won't ever enter anything down here. When we put in like negative eight up here in three, two, one, notice it changes this to negative eight. I'll go back to negative five for right now. Okay, the increment we're going to use is going to be formula. So, of course, we start again with equals, parenthesis. I'm going to take my x max, click it, subtract my x min, click it, parentheses, and I'm going to divide by slash 10,000. And, and I get 0 .001. If you've got something smaller than that, that, it'll use the space allowed, but trust me, that's 0 .001 in this case. Um, and that is how much we're going to count by as on our journey to get from negative 5 to 5. So what I want to put in A22 is equals what it used to be, A21, plus my increment, B19. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign between the B and the 19. You're going to need to do this, and I'll explain why we do that in just a moment here. So it should be A21 plus B dollar sign 19. And if you've worked with Excel before, you may know where I'm going with this. Okay, now, when we select a cell, if you notice, the cell is all dark box around it except the very corner. When I float over the very corner, my cursor changes. That is to be able to replicate. This is so we don't have to enter 10,000 different, we don't have to 10,000 times do this. Watch as I drag with that replicate bar. As I drag this out, now I gotta float over till I get the little black cross or the plus sign. As I drag that down and release, you can see we're counting up. And now here's something I want you to, to pay attention to. I'm, actually all of it be good to pay attention to, but special attention to this. See how this is taking my A21 in blue and adding on my B19. The next cell is taking A22. It dropped down, but the B19 stayed all the way down to maybe this one. A28, the cell above it, and the B dollar sign 19. That's what the dollar sign is doing for us. Okay, now I said we need a 10,000 element T-chart somewhere right around in there. So I'm going to replicate this all the way down to 10,021. Takes a moment, and that's why sometimes I say replicating is a drag. So the further down I go with this, the faster it'll start replicating. And not too bad, but if you got a song to hum along while we're doing this, again, this is way overkill for what we're doing today. But we're going to be adding to this as the year goes on. Um, we're going to want to have a lot of elements in our T-chart. So it's going pretty quickly now. See how good I am at this, stopping it. Oh, too soon. All right, so I'm just going to continue my replicating down to about 10,021. Let's see where we're at here. And I see 10,020 got me close, and I need to go to 10,021 to get my five. All right. Now... Let's, let's see how this guy's working for us. What if they chose a different X min, X max? Maybe like negative 3.14 to 3.14 if we were doing a trig function. And there we go. We see we got a weird increment. And 
we're counting all the way down to, sure enough, it starts at our X min, starts at our X max, starts at our X min, ends at our X max. That's what our increment's doing for us. All right, if you're with me there, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter basically this formula using these values for A, B, C, D, E, and F, and using these values down here for X. So I'm going to start with the formula in B21, and I'm going to put equals. And now I want A, but I don't type in A. I don't click on A here. I click on the value of A, which for me is C2. And then times is Shift 8. And then I want my X value, which is right here. Raise to the is a caret, Shift 6 raised to the fifth. So that is a x to the fifth. And I'm going to continue on from there. Plus my b value, which is zero, times my a value, or excuse me, x value, raised to the fourth. I'm going to widen this out for right now, um, just so you can see what's kind of going on in there and come back to it okay so there is a x to the fifth plus b x to the fourth plus c times x to the third plus d times x to the second plus e times x plus f now that's great, except when I drag, when I replicate this, I want all of my A21s to chase down the T-chart. In other words, when I replicate this down in the 24th row here, I'm going to want that to be A24, but I do not want my values up here, CT, C2 through C7 to change. So I'm going to change all the Cs to C dollar signs. And double check that. Make sure you, all your C's are dollar signs. None of your A's are dollar signs. Uh, otherwise, you're going to see some weird results. You can always come back and fix it. I'm going to hit Enter. And I could drag this all the way down to 10,000. But if a column has already been created, and you create a new column, information with new data in it next to that, if you float over the replicate, the replicate, area, you get the, the plus sign, and you double click, Excel is smart enough to know we're going to take that all the way down even with the other column, which is pretty slick. Okay, now we have our data and we're ready to create a graph. We're not dealing with y min, y max yet. We're not dealing with uh, the equation of tangent line, but what we want to do is we want to we want to select all of the y values, and we can do that by dragging down, but we can also do that kind of cleverly by just re-replicating this double click. Okay, so trust that all of that is selected. You can take a quick peek if you want. All of that is selected, and then we want to go to insert a line graph. And I'm going to choose the very first line graph, this guy. And we see we've got some poly what appears to be polynomic curve, and that's good news. What we don't see is we don't see this running from negative 3.14 to 3.14, but we're going to add that in in just a moment. So I'm going to just say, hey, I'm done with this. I'm going to just click off in white space here somewhere, an empty cell, and there's our graph. So I want to change the values in here to be my values over here. I'm going to just go to the graph, not over an axis label, but just over the plot area, right click, and I'm going to select data. There are other ways to do this, but I think this is pretty slick. Now, what I want, if you notice right here, this has all of our entries are from this sheet B21 through B1021. I want my horizontal category axis to look just like this, except I want it to be my X values, A21 through A10021. Now, I could type that in. I could actually select over here, hit edit, and drag it in, but I'm going to just take this, control C it, I'm going to come over to this side, edit, axis label range. Now again, I could drag this in right now, but I'm just going to type in 
my sheet one B21 and just change the B to A. Don't worry about capitalizing. You can if you want. And I'm going to click OK. And I look at that and it says there's the values I'm choosing dot 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 on forever. So let's give that a shot. OK. Let's take a look at our graph. Ooh, that's good. Negative 3.14 up to, I would suggest, maybe that's 3.14. Now, realize we have 10,000 elements, and Excel has arbitrarily chosen to, to put the numbers that go with this many of them. How I don't know how much space is between. They're also trying to put tick marks, 10,000 of them in here. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to format this, so maybe it's just a couple decimals, and maybe we don't have as many of these here. So when in doubt, point at something and click. I'm, I'm not crazy about the appearance of these numbers. So if I right click, try that again, right click on those, I get format axis. Let's take a look at that. Interval between tick marks. This means it's putting, this one means it's putting a tick mark every single element, all of our 10,000 elements. I'm gonna put a thousand intervals between tick marks. And I could just click that. Let's go ahead and just click that. We can come back to this. Let's see how that looks. Okay, now I got less tick marks. I don't. It might, it's like that comb effect where the teeth get closer and closer. It just becomes a big, thick line. But what else about this am I not crazy about? Let's go back to right-click format axis. Um, local distance from axis? No, I don't think so. Uh, specify interval unit, interval between labels. Ooh, it might be nice to have, notice what just happened there. When I click that, and now it's trying to put all 10,000 in. It might be nice just to have an interval unit match up to every tick mark. 1,000. Let's try that. That looks pretty good. We've got this little clumsy value of zero here. We're going to just deal with that for now. Um, kind of a slick way to get rid of that would be to kind of throw, since I'm starting at negative 3.14, ending at 3.14, halfway through is zero. If I maybe, maybe if I put like, a one here or something like that to kind of avoid it. So this is kind of what things would look like. So let's go ahead and right click this again, format the axis. Let's look at some other options. Number, uh, general, number, current. Let's go to general. It might be nice to, if we have a number, it might be nice to specify two decimal places or whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and select that. I might also go to alignment and you can play around in here. It's kind of fun. Um, text direction, I might have my text look like this. So it's going up and down. Oh, you, and it previews it for you. That looks pretty clean. Then the last thing I'm looking at on this would be this series one marker, which sometimes is useful if we have multiple graphs and we can name those. But I'm just going to right click that guy and delete it so we can focus on our graph. And now you can do all sorts of cool things with coloring on this, but I want to illustrate that this is a dynamic graph now. For instance, if I change my X min, it looks kind of interesting over here around negative two or so. If I change this to negative two, and then it just takes off after we get past about one here. So maybe I, maybe 1.5 I'll put in here. 1.5. I put that in the wrong spot. Let's put that here. 1.5. And notice how basically Microsoft Excel is on Zoom fit mode. It tries to use as much Y space as we can. And that's really pretty ideal for most applications. But sometimes we want to zoom in, zoom out. And we'll be talking about an option to, for that on the next video where we're going to work with Y min, Y max, create a button for that. We're going to be able to put in an X value, get out the Y value that associates to it, find the slope at that point and then graph in a tangent line at that point. So that'll be pretty slick. But that's probably a good stopping place for right now. So we'll just call this part one of our polynomial grapher. And uh, appreciate you watching this. Um, if, if you're caught up with us, you want to continue on, I would expect that uh, th that video will be, will be linked um, with a similar title, only part two. So thank you very much for your time and hope, hope this is something that can become useful. As I said, over the course of this year, we're going to add a lot more to this and uh, really, really a cool calculus tool. We're ultimately going to be finding areas under curves and, and we're going to be doing this with, with maybe 10 different types of common functions. 
trig functions and log functions and exponential functions, um, rational, uh, rational functions. So uh, going to be really good stuff. Thanks a lot. Have a good day and check in frequently.